In the year of 1801, a scientific experiment took place that would forever change the way we understand reality. The implications of what was scientifically proven on that day shook the paradigm of how we perceive existence so profoundly that even today, despite living surrounded by devices and paraphernalia created using the technology stemming from this discovery, we still fiercely deny the real meaning behind this experiment. I am talking about the double slit experiment, the foundation of what would become quantum mechanics, the understanding of how this reality is truly created. This experiment not only revolutionized modern physics, but also invites us to delve deeper into the rabbit hole, exploring its implications on the nature of reality, consciousness, and existence. Welcome to one of humanity's greatest discoveries. Today, you will scientifically understand how you create your reality. Thomas Young was a true polymath of the 19th century. Born in 1773 in England, he was one of those rare geniuses who mastered multiple areas of knowledge. In addition to being a physicist, he was a physician, linguist and Egyptologist, contributing significantly to the study of optics, acoustics, and even the deciphering of the Rosetta Stone. Young was known as the last man who knew everything for his insatiable curiosity and multifaceted intelligence. In the year of 1801, he conducted an experiment that would forever change our understanding of light and subsequently of reality itself. Young aimed to resolve a debate that divided scientists at the time. Was light composed of particles, as proposed by Sir Isaac Newton, or waves, as suggested by other thinkers like Christian Huygens? For this, he devised a simple yet incredibly ingenious experiment. Young began with a light source, initially a candle, as electricity was not yet widely available. He positioned the light to pass through a small aperture, creating a thin directed beam. This beam was then directed toward a barrier with two very narrow slits placed close together. Behind this barrier was a white screen where he could observe the outcome. If light were composed of particles, like bullets fired from a gun, Young expected to see two bands of light on the screen, directly aligned with the two slits. This would make sense because the light particles would pass through one slit or the other and travel straight to the screen. However, what he observed was surprising. Instead of two bands of light, he saw an interference pattern consisting of multiple alternating light and dark bands, like ripples on a water surface. This pattern indicated that light did not behave as isolated particles, but as waves passing through both slits simultaneously. As the waves passed through the slits, they spread out and overlapped, creating regions of constructive interference, bright bands, and destructive interference, dark bands. Young concluded that light was, indeed, a wave, confirming the wave theory and challenging the dominant idea of the time, which viewed light as particles. More than 100 years later, when quantum physics began to take shape, Scientists revisited the double-slit experiment, this time with more sophisticated equipment and using individual particles like electrons and photons. They fired these particles, one by one, toward the slits and observed the results. The unexpected happened. Even when firing isolated particles, the interference pattern still formed on the screen. This suggested that each particle was somehow passing through both slits simultaneously, behaving like a wave and interfering with itself. However, the true strangeness emerged when scientists installed detectors to observe which slit each particle passed through. At the moment this measurement was made, the interference pattern disappeared and the particles behaved as if they had passed through only one of the slits. This phenomenon revealed that the behavior of particles changed depending on whether or not they were being observed. In other words, the mere presence of an observer seemed to determine whether the particles acted as waves or particles. This phenomenon was called 
Wave Function Collapse by Werner Heisenberg, a German theoretical physicist, and became a central concept in quantum physics. Essentially, before being observed, particles exist in a state of superposition, where all their possible states coexist. In other words, infinite possibilities. But at the moment of observation, they choose a single state. The double-slit experiment shows us that, at the quantum level, reality is not fixed or determined. Instead, it is a field of infinite possibilities that only fully manifests in response to interaction with an observer. This leads us to an unsettling question. What is the role of the observer in the universe? Human consciousness, seemingly so separate from the physical world, appears to play a fundamental role in the behavior of matter at the quantum level. But Hermes Trismegistus gave us the answer long ago. As above, so below. Imagine standing in front of a closed door. Behind it, there could be a dog, a cat, or even nothing. Several possibilities coexist because you have yet to open the door and look. In the quantum world, something similar happens with particles. Before they are observed, they exist in a state called superposition, where all possibilities are open. But the moment you look or measure one of these particles, something magical happens. All the possibilities vanish, and only one becomes real. This is what we call the collapse of the wave function. The mere attention of the observer transforms possibility into reality. In life, this means that whatever we focus our attention on grows and takes shape. When you concentrate your thoughts, energy, and intentions on something, be it a dream, a goal, or a relationship, you are literally shaping the direction your life takes. For instance, if you focus your energy on problems, it's as if you are measuring and strengthening that reality. On the other hand, if you direct your attention to solutions and possibilities, that is the reality that begins to take form. A person facing financial difficulties who spends all their time thinking about debts will only increase those debts more and more. However, if their focus shifts to how to make money to pay the debts, the solution, opportunity, or connection will soon appear. If you feel stuck in a situation, the collapse of the wave function teaches that limitations are temporary. There are infinite possibilities waiting to manifest as soon as you change the focus of your observation. Remember the first hermetic principle. The universe is mental. Thomas Young's experiment sparked the emergence of quantum mechanics and all its implications. However, among all the concepts derived from it, the most fundamental to understand is what is known as the quantum vacuum. Imagine you have an extremely powerful microscope and point it at your hand. You would first see the molecules that form your skin. Going deeper, you would observe atoms with protons and neutrons in the nucleus and electrons orbiting around them. Delving even further, you would see quarks, elementary particles even smaller than protons and neutrons. This is where science has reached so far. From here, there are two main interpretations. One suggests that beneath the level of quarks are superstrings, while the other posits the existence of the Higgs boson, the field that gives mass to everything that exists. But what lies beneath that? The quantum vacuum an infinite field of primordial energy. It is from this that everything that exists emerges. The energy that emerges and comes into contact with the Higgs boson field, which also emerges from the quantum vacuum, gives mass to quarks, which form protons, which form atoms, which form molecules, which form cells, which form organs, which form the bodies of all organic beings. For example, the human being. This is the pure and simple reality. Everything comes from the quantum vacuum. It is everything that exists. Everything else is either an emanation or a self-organization of it. 
Other interpretations are metaphorical, and any metaphor is valid as long as it is understood to be a metaphor. Everything that exists is made up of primordial energy. This quantum vacuum is present in everything, from the level of the primordial ocean of energy, from which everything emerges, to galaxies, galaxy clusters, and the entire universe. Nothing is outside the quantum vacuum. It is everything that exists. It is fundamentally important to understand this. There is nothing that is not the quantum vacuum. It is the energy present in everything. It is energy, pure energy, without mass or matter. Mass only appears when energy interacts with the Higgs boson field, which also comes from the quantum vacuum. When people understand that they are formed by the quantum vacuum and that everything else is as well, all problems will disappear. Everything will be resolved. Being formed by the quantum vacuum means its essence is within every person. This essence is what is referred to as the divine spark, a particle of the quantum vacuum, like its fingerprint. Every being that exists has an individual and individualized divine spark emanating from the quantum vacuum. The spark is the quantum vacuum itself. Understanding and recognizing this is what is called enlightenment. The enlightened being is one who feels this. Feeling is the key here. Without feeling, the divine spark cannot be accepted, and thus the illusion of separation continues. To love the all, one must feel that the all is the essence of everything that exists. On the deepest level, the all and the person are the same thing. But the person must feel this. When someone feels this, they begin to let the all resolve everything. This is what is meant by abandoning the ego, allowing the spark to act, setting aside personal interests, and letting the spark guide everything. Without this, a person will try to control their own life with their mind. At this point, problems will inevitably arise because ignoring the all and attempting to control a life which is formed by the all is entirely illogical and cannot work. Releasing the ego and letting the spark take care of everything is the only solution. This does not mean doing nothing, no working, no studying, etc. Quite the opposite. We must do everything within our power so that the spark can act. Remember that the spark resides within our bodies and the body is the vehicle for the spark. The vehicle must be in the best possible condition. Problems arise more and more until a person understands and accepts that the divine spark exists. Suffering is not necessary to grasp this. Simply accepting it resolves everything. Suffering comes from resisting the understanding that everything is the all and that the all is everything that exists. It's like being inside a body, like a cell in a liver, for example, and not accepting that you are part of the liver. We are within the all. The all is within us. One is all, and all is one. Every war, enslavement, murder, abuse, exploitation, and so on exists because of the illusion of separation, of failing to recognize that everything is interconnected. When you harm someone else, you harm yourself. Now let me ask you, what are the characteristics usually attributed to God? Omnipresence, omnipotence, omniscience. The quantum vacuum is the ocean of potential energy from which everything emerges. In other words, it is present in everything, making it omnipresent. It is a wave of infinite possibilities, meaning it can do anything, making it omnipotent. And because it is in everything, it is present in everything that happens, meaning it knows everything, making it omniscient. For those who still do not understand, the quantum vacuum is God. God, the creator, the source of all things, the Tao. Understanding the quantum vacuum is understanding who God is, the primary source of everything that exists. If humanity understood this, 
all wars, exploitation, abuse, hunger, and so on, would end. For now, quantum mechanics remains a topic of debates and discussions, just as Newton's universal gravitation theory and Einstein's general relativity once were. Even though it is scientifically proven, the paradigm shift is so significant that there is fierce denial of this reality. But the truth always comes to light, whether we want it to or not. One day, all of this will be taught in schools to children, just like the law of gravity. As Max Planck, the father of quantum physics and the creator of the term quantum, once said, science advances one funeral at a time. Thank you for watching.